Welcome back to the last video in the state-by-state -state application video series that we've been doing. And today we're taking a look at the state of Idaho. And it's my home state, and it's also the last state to apply for elk, the last latest deadline. So the deadline to apply for a controlled hunt in the state of Idaho is June 5th. So we're gonna take a look at Idaho and talk about some of the benefits, some of the downsides, and actually walk through how I would research looking for a unit in the state of Idaho, whether that be a controlled hunt or over the counter. So the first thing you need to know is the deadline to apply for a controlled hunt is June 5th. The cost for a non-resident in Idaho, you have to buy a hunting license. So the license is $154.75. And if you draw an elk tag or want to purchase an elk tag, that tag is going to cost you an additional $416.75. In addition to that, you have to have a $20 archery stamp if you plan to hunt an archery only season. And the cost per species to apply for a controlled hunt is $14.75. So with that out of the way, a couple of great things about Idaho. Idaho is managed for opportunity. And in the state of Idaho, the units are broken down. I believe there's 96 or 98 elk hunting units in the state. They're managed in zones. And the zones are usually made up of anywhere from two to four or five units. And there are 30 elk zones in the state of Idaho. Now in Idaho, 26 of those zones have some form of over-the-counter hunting opportunity for elk. It may be just a archery, a late season archery over the counter. It may be a rifle over the counter, but 26 of the 30 zones in Idaho have opportunity to basically show up and buy a tag. Now, when I mention that for a non-resident, you have to keep in mind, there is a total quota of elk licenses or elk tags available in the state of Idaho, and it's just shy of 13,000. So some zones are restricted on a quota, and once that quota of tags is sold out for a non-resident, there are no more available for that zone. Fortunately, you can usually find one in another zone fairly easily, and those elk tags usually don't sell out until after uh, the 1st of September when a lot of the units have opened. So keep that in mind if you're a non-resident. Be sure and look at each individual unit or zone that you want to hunt and find out if there is a quota and find out when those tags go on sale because it changes. Some of them are on sale in December the previous year. Some of them go on sale in May, some of them later. So just know there are quotas on some units and you need to be aware of that and make sure you have a plan in place to get your tag if you're planning on hunting that unit or that zone. Another really important thing to remember is that in Idaho, non-residents can receive up to 10% of the total tags for a hunt. That doesn't mean 10% are set aside. So there may be a year that a non-resident receives no tags in a specific hunt, uh, and they can't receive more than 10%. So you go in the same pool as the residents to draw your tag. Once 10%, say there's 100 tags in a hunt, once 10 tags have been drawn by non-residents, there might still be 50 tags available in that controlled hunt to dish out, but no more non-residents will receive them because they've already received that 10% quota or cap. On the flip side, all 100 of those tags might go to residents if the first 100 people drawn from the pool are residents, and there is no guarantee for a non-resident to draw a tag. The other thing to keep in mind is if you draw a controlled hunt tag in Idaho, you have to redeem that tag. You have to pick it up or purchase it online before August 1st. If you don't, that tag is forfeited and it actually goes into another pool and there's another application process in August for second round or leftover tags that weren't picked up uh, the first time. So keep that in mind, August 1st is an important date, June 5th is an important date, as well as the dates that your specific tag goes on sale in a specific unit in Idaho. A couple more things, Idaho is managed on A and B tags. So when you apply or purchase a tag, make sure you know which tag you are applying or purchasing. A tags are primarily an archery or muzzleloader tag, and the B tags are primarily your rifle tags. So most of the time, each tag is going to have opportunity for the other weapon, but it's gonna be a lot more limited. For instance, 
The A tag may enable you to hunt the entire archery season from August 30th through September 30th for uh, bulls or cows. You might also have an opportunity to hunt a late season muzzleloader hunt uh, for a couple of weeks for antlerless. And you might also have an opportunity to hunt a shortened season with a rifle for spike only. On the flip side, that same unit might have a B tag that gives you a chance to hunt for antlered elk during the rifle season, which would be October 15th through November 3rd. And it might also enable you to hunt during the first half of the archery season from August 30th through September 13th for spikes or cows only. So each unit in each zone is going to have different regulations based on the management objectives for that unit and zone. So make sure that you're researching that Primarily though, if you want to hunt with an archery, you're looking at an A tag. If you want to hunt with a rifle, you're looking at a B tag. But there are other opportunities typically within that tag that you can hunt with other weapons during other seasons. So as we've done in the past, we're going to jump into Go Hunt and specifically their Insider membership and take a look at how I would research finding units or zones within the state of Idaho to hunt both controlled and over-the-counter. So we're going to start with uh, controlled hunts and if you've followed these before you'll know that we can go in and look at each state through the Go Hunt Insider. Uh, I want to show drawing odds because Idaho is a unique state. Idaho has no point system, no preference point, no bonus point. And sometimes there's some heat drawn towards Idaho based on that, but honestly I think it's the best system, the best platform you can have because everyone has an equal chance each year of drawing any tag in the state. So the harder to draw hunts, sometimes people are going to draw it every other year maybe. And sometimes an easy to draw hunt that has 75% draw odds, you might not draw it three years in a row just simply based on the fact that there are no weighted points in Idaho. So a new hunter getting into the game is going to have the same opportunity to draw a controlled hunt in any unit in Idaho as someone who's been applying for that same hunt for 30 years. So we're going to look at Idaho and draw odds and we're going to look at non-resident and elk. And in Idaho there are, uh, let's see, there's six, seven, eight, so seven controlled hunts for archery. There are five controlled hunts for early muzzleloader. Uh, looks like there are seven controlled hunts for late muzzleloader. And then rifle gets into a whole bunch, both early and late hunts. So we're going to look at, uh, let's just pick one here. Let's say unit 54 in the state of Idaho. That is the hardest to draw uh, archery controlled hunt. It's a premium hunt. It's down on the, on the Nevada border. Big bulls, very few uh, tags allotted there. But in Unit 54, your draw odds have gone down each year in Idaho. Starting in 2015, it was 1.1%, 1, 1 .1%, uh, and now it's about 0.45%. So you have a 1 in 200 chance of drawing a non-resident elk tag and hunting elk with bow and arrow in Unit 54. Uh, tag allocation, last year there were 10 tags. Total, obviously non-residents can receive no more than one of those because of the 10% cap. And so last year non-residents received one, residents received nine. Same the previous year. The year before that, there were 20 tags. 19 went to residents, one went to a non-resident. Uh, in 2015, there were 10 tags. Residents got all 10 of them. Non-residents got zero. So gives you an idea there for draw odds in the state of Idaho for that specific hardest to draw archery hunt you'll see that the odds for a non-resident range from that 0.45% up to a little over 6% for the controlled hunts for archery. When you get into muzzleloader, there's some muzzleloader hunts that are 45% for a non-resident. Uh, looking through here, some of the rifle hunts, uh, you're looking at anywhere from 0.45% up to about 10% for those early antlered uh, season controlled hunts. So, just gives you an idea. The nice thing about Go Hunt with this is it's really easy to determine the draw odds from the previous year. And if you look throughout those historical odds from year to year, you're going to see trends. And on a year when the draw odds are low, the next year typically they might bump up a little bit. And you'll see a little bit of fluctuation going high and low on that 
because as we look at this for last year, we're going to see that that specific unit has low draw odds, so we might not apply for it. We're going to apply for one that has higher draw odds this year. That's going to lower the draw odds this year for that unit because everyone who has access to this information is probably going to do something similar. So keep that in mind as you're looking at draw odds uh, in the state of Idaho. They're going to be fairly consistent from year to year because there are no points. Everyone's in the same pool. It's going to be pretty easy to determine your overall odds for that hunt uh, for this specific year. As we go back and go into Go Hunt Insider at their base camp. We're going to actually go into the Insider 2.0 and use filtering for the state of Idaho. And we go into state of Idaho, it's going to come up. We're going to select elk and it's going to show us all of the elk units in the state of Idaho. So you'll see top to bottom, everything's broken out by these units. Keep in mind again that when you get a tag, that tag is for a zone and it usually includes multiple units and you can hunt any of the units that are included in that zone. So you're not restricted just to a unit, you're restricted to the units within the zone that your tag is good for. So I want to look at first here controlled hunt. So we're going to say, you know, we're going to set our filtering to trophy potential of 300 plus. Again, Idaho is managed more on opportunity than on trophy quality. So you're not going to have a lot of units that uh, are known for trophy bulls. But with that being said, in Idaho, just about any unit you hunt, you have the potential to uh, find and hunt a 300 plus bull in Idaho. Very few of them are going to have 340 or 350 plus, but there are a few that are managed for that. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. We'll go into residency. We'll keep our, our draw odds at zero for right now. And we'll go in and look at some specific hunts. So I want to look at uh, let's go archery controlled and let's go early rifle controlled for right now. All right, so we've got that set. Public land in Idaho is off the chart. You are not going to have an issue for the most part finding plenty of public land to hunt. I'm going to set this at 50%, but several units are 90% or more public land. And harvest success. This is what I want to, what, a, what I kind of want to focus on right now. So we're showing these specific units here, and I'm just going to guess and say there's 20 to 25 units that are controlled hunts that we can look at for early archery or early rifle controlled hunts. Now I'm going to slide our success, and I'm going to go up to 50% success rates. And we'll notice that a handful of them stay shown here. And the reason why is, for instance, Unit 30, and I'm just picking this completely random. So anyone who hunts Unit 30 and you think that I'm pointing people to Unit 30, I am not. I just, it's sitting right here, it's right here. Don't hate me, I'm not pointing people or pushing people to Unit 30. I've gotten some comments recently from other states and people have said, why don't you go and give away all the honey holes in your own state? So I'm doing Idaho now. For those of you who are worried I was gonna skip Idaho, it's here. I'm not showing units that I recommend you apply for. I'm simply picking one here. So unit 30, completely by random, not one I'm recommending you apply for. But with that being said, you'll notice that for the early controlled hunt, it opens October 1st through October 14th. So good chance the bulls are going to be rutting still. Trophy potential is 330 inches plus. So for Idaho, that's about as good as it gets. Bull to cow ratio, 26 to 100. Again, for Idaho, that's a great bull to cow ratio. 50% of the bulls that are harvested on this hunt are six point or better. Public land is 79.6%. When we go down and look at this, the draw odds for this hunt for a non-resident are 3%. So you have a three out of 100 chance of drawing that tag. But if you do draw, the harvest success for that hunt is 80%. So that's why we're showing several of these hunts have greater than 50% success rate. And I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that a majority of those are early rifle hunts. And the majority of those probably open October 1st or October 5th, which gives you a chance to hunt rutting bull elk with a rifle. So uh, filtering 2.0 in Go Hunt Insider, especially in a state like Idaho, is going to give you so much information. And you can actually, we can dial all the way up. Let's go to 80% success rate. There are still five units 
that you can apply for in the state of Idaho that are going to give you an 80% success rate, which is unheard of. Those are incredible success rates. Without any exception, those are all early rifle controlled hunts that open either on October 1st or September 25th. And those success rates are 80%, 80%, 100%, 100%, and 80%. The problem with those are most of them are only gonna offer five or 10 tags total. So as a non-resident, probably not ones you're gonna wanna look at because your chances of drawing are very, very low. With that being said, there is some great hunting opportunity in Idaho if you can draw the tag. We're gonna pick unit 30 here again and just go inside and look at the details. But looking at it, in 2018, it's over-the-counter for archery. So when we get into over-the-counter, talking about over-the-counter details, keep in mind there are several units that are over-the-counter for archery, but that are controlled for rifle. If I'm an archery hunter, those are probably gonna be some of the first units I look at to go and hunt over-the-counter because they are controlled for, art or for rifle, which means we're gonna have an older age class of elk typically in those units. So a, a unit that is controlled for rifle, but over-the-counter for archery is a great unit to look at for an over-the-counter opportunity. For the controlled hunt in unit 30, October 1st to October 14th, in 2018, there were a total of 30 tags. So two of them went to non-residents. Success rate has hovered between 66% and 84% over the last five seasons. An incredibly high success rate hunt with 30 total tags, two for non-residents last year. Again, your success rates uh, for drawing that, your, your draw odds are 3%. There's also a rifle controlled hunt in that unit that opens November, uh, November 1st and goes through November 30th. So a late season, more than likely a migration type of hunt or a winter ground type of hunt. Success rates there have hovered between 59% and 90% the last five years. More tags allocated there, 110 tags, which last year they gave 11 to non-residents. So just giving you an idea, unit 30 would be a great unit to consider uh, based on the criteria that we've entered, but there's a lot of other criteria we can look at. There are late muzzleloader hunts, late rifle hunts. Depending on the unit you wanna hunt, Go Hunt Insider and Filtering 2.0 is going to help you narrow down some of those incredible units. Uh, going into back into archery only, we're going to look at unit 54. And again, I pick unit 54. It's 0.45% draw odds. I'm not destroying anyone's draw odds by talking about it here in the video because draw odds are already 1 in 200. So uh, if we take a look at that, archery only, controlled hunts in the state of Idaho, everything disappears based on probably harvest success. So I'm gonna drop us down to 30% harvest success, and you'll see that 54 pops up. If we go up to 40%, it disappears. That'll go back down to 30. And 54 is now here on our radar. For an archery controlled hunt, we have 350 inch plus potential 100% of the bulls that are harvested are six-point bulls. Public land is 60%. So when we get into Idaho, 60% public land is actually really low. Most states or most units in Idaho have more than 60%. So keep in mind, there is gonna be some private land on that hunt. As we mentioned, draw odds for non-resident are 0.45%. Harvest success rate is 30%. Last year, there were 214 total applications. So as we go into the details for unit 54, archery controlled hunt, it's August 30th through September 24th. So it actually ends a week earlier than a lot of the archery seasons in Idaho. And last year there were a total of 10 tags, one went to a non-resident. Harvest success has hovered between 30% and 100% in that unit. And allocation or application total uh, Non-resident applications last year, there were 214 for that one tag. For a resident, it's going to be a little bit better draw odds. There were nine resident tags issued last year and 581 applications. So actually not a whole lot better there either. But 
just to give you an idea there, the, the detail and the information you can gather from Go Hunt Insider for these controlled hunts in the state of Idaho. And if I was asked, what hunt should I apply for? I would ask, what weapon do you wanna hunt with? That's gonna help us as we filter here. Uh, if it's archery, we go archery only. If it doesn't matter, we put all of them in there. If we're asking what your trophy potential, do you want to kill a big bull in the state of Idaho? Is that important to you? We're gonna be able to set our trophy potential. And let's go up and set that to 330. Archery only, let's, let's go rifle also here just to give us some more options because there's only six or seven controlled archery, uh, early archery hunts in the state of Idaho. So if we go early rifle controlled, add that to our list here. And if we want minimum draw odds of 5%, we want to have a decent chance. We don't want any of the 0.45% hunts. And we want harvest success rates of 20% or more and good public land. We are left with not very many options there. If we drop that to 310 inches, uh, we've got more. Let's get it up to 320. And basically we have one hunt for 320 plus bulls uh, in the state of Idaho. So it really narrows us down. Then we can say, okay, I'm not as concerned about a 320 inch bull, 310 will work. We drop it to 310, it adds another six units to our opportunities here. We can expand this and look at late season rifle. We can look at early season muzzleloader, all of those different controls that we have to help us find the perfect controlled hunt. Again, in Idaho, you have to buy a license, a hunting license, in order to apply for a controlled hunt. So it may not make sense if you just simply want to apply, but you aren't gonna come and hunt Idaho unless you draw a controlled hunt. You're spending $154.75 plus the $14.75 application fee just to have a chance to draw a hunt. On the flip side, if you know you're coming to Idaho this fall and you're okay hunting over the counter, you have to buy the license anyway you might as well put in for a controlled hunt and roll the dice. It's only costing you an extra $14.75. Put in for a controlled hunt, shoot for the moon if you want to, go for a really high quality controlled hunt. And then if you don't draw, you have over the counter that you can fall back on. And that's what I wanna take a look at next are over the counter opportunities in the state of Idaho. So we're gonna erase all of our filters here or reset all of our filters. Now let's go down the bottom and hit reset filters, go to Idaho and elk. And this is showing us all of the units in Idaho that we have a chance of either drawing or hunting over the counter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select early archery over the counter, late archery over the counter, late muzzleloader over the counter, early rifle over the counter, and late rifle over the counter. Now when I do this, and I look at non-resident, these are all of the units that have some form of an over-the-counter hunt for elk in the state of Idaho. You will see probably 80% of our state has some form of an over-the-counter hunt for elk. Incredible opportunity. Now we can narrow down these over-the-counter opportunities. So if we look at trophy potential and we go to 300 inches or bigger, these are going to be units that are managed more for a mature age class elk, or they're just more remote. And due to the remoteness of the unit, bigger bulls are going to exist there. If we go down and look at public land again, if we put 50% here, we probably aren't gonna notice hardly any change. Southeast corner in the Southern part of the state, there's a lot of private land down there. So some of those dropped off, but for the majority of the state, we're still looking just fine at 50%. I'm gonna bump this up to 70% because we don't lose very much there. Most of the units are going to have 70% or more public access. Harvest success. This is where we're going to notice the most drastic difference between the controlled hunts and the over-the-counter hunts. And if I put our harvest success rate at 30%, there are only two units in the state of Idaho that have a chance at a 300 plus bull that are 70% public land over the counter and have a 30% or greater harvest success rate. Both of those are early archery over the counter hunts in the state of Idaho. 
and I'm going to throw them out there. That's unit 33 and unit 36 up in the Sawtooth White Cloud area in the state of Idaho. There are quotas on those tags for a non-resident. So if you're planning on hunting those units, know when the date is that you have to purchase that tag by and realize in the past, sometimes a non-resident quota is filled within the first hour or two or even faster of those tags becoming available. So while they are over the counter, there is a quota on them. There's no draw, there's no controlled hunt process, but you do uh, receive those on a first come first serve basis. So keep that in mind. If you look at that again, it's 14 to 100 bull to cow ratio, 36 to 48% of the bulls that are harvested in that unit are six point or better. Public land is 93 to 96% and harvest success rate is 30 and 31 percent so incredible information especially I, I almost said even for but especially for over-the-counter hunts in the state of idaho when you use filtering 2.0 on go hunt insider now if we slide that back down and get us down to a 20 percent success rate or better more units are going to pop up still not a lot 20 percent for an over-the-counter hunt on success rates uh, 300 or better. If we drop this down to 270 inches or better, more units are going to pop up here. We're going to get a handful of more units. And even in those units, realistically, you have a chance of finding a 300 plus bull. I would say any unit in the state of Idaho is going to hold 300 inch bulls. Uh, they're certainly not behind every tree, but if you're willing to work and get off the roads, you have a good chance of finding a mature bull, uh, a representative mature bull in the state of Idaho. So with that, uh, I hope that gives you a really good idea of the power of Go Hunt Insider and why I find it such a useful resource. Uh, this is not a paid promotion for Go Hunt Insider. This is a, a video on learning how to research units in the state of Idaho, and I have found nothing as powerful as Go Hunt Insider when it comes to that. I think a lot of times when we think of Go Hunt, we think of controlled hunts but the power to research over-the-counter hunts for every state in the West that has over-the-counter tags is hopefully demonstrated here in, in this short video. When it comes to applying in Idaho, just go to, they've, they've got a really easy to navigate website for applying. The actual state website is not quite as easy to navigate, but if you know what unit and what hunt you want to apply for, just go to IDFG, that's Idaho Department Fish and Game, idfg.huntfishidaho.net. And if you've not applied or signed in before, you're gonna to have to create an account. Once you log in, it's really easy to navigate. You can apply for controlled hunts. You can buy your licenses. You can do everything you need to do right there on that state managed website. So go to uh, gohunt.com forward slash elk 101. If you wanna sign up for a Go Hunt Insider membership, GoHunt's gonna send you a gift card for $50 that you can spend in the Elk 101 store on all of your elk hunting gear needs. And you're gonna have access to the most powerful resource I've found for controlled and over-the-counter research of elk hunting opportunities. So thanks for joining us. Again, the reminder, June 5th is the deadline for the state of Idaho. Once that deadline comes and goes, you're not gonna be able to apply for elk hunts in the West after that date. So Idaho's the last state, it's kind of the fallback state for a lot of us that didn't draw in other states and there are no point systems, so everyone has a chance. So good luck in the draws. If you don't apply, good luck on your over-the-counter elk hunting adventures this fall. The success rate for public land do-it-yourself elk hunters hovers around 10%. The reality of that statement is that nine out of 10 elk hunters each fall fail to fill their elk tag, or the average elk hunter only fills their elk tag once every 10 years. But average no longer applies to you. The University of Elk Hunting online course was created with one purpose, to provide you with all the resources and information you need to maximize your elk hunting success. This course covers everything from the very basics all the way through detailed and advanced elk hunting tactics and strategies. The University of Elk Hunting online course contains 17 modules of elk hunting information organized into 54 chapters covering every imaginable topic related to elk hunting. It's truly the most complete and comprehensive resource available for elk hunters. If you're ready to take your elk hunting success to the next level and crush the averages, sign up for the University of Elk Hunting online course today.